in the middle of global panic and uncertainty, and fears of the perceived inevitable apocalypse brought about by the coronavirus plague. The world is desperate to know what is our Creator saying about our demise. Has God spoken? Is God speaking? Will God speak? In this expose, we shall uncover the mind of God concerning this global plague, the coronavirus. It did not come as a surprise. God spoke concerning this catastrophic impact of the virus, delivering the curing solution for humanity through Prophet Emmanuel Makandiwa before tens of thousands several years ago in Harare, Zimbabwe. As we begin, please note that this prophecy was given on three separate occasions as three distinct parts. Watch this entire video until the very end so that you do not miss the prophecy that began it all. I saw also now we have diseases that are coming. We have seen many diseases and all that we have, we have been praying about it and we are praying and uh, you will have another disease more deadly. And I'm, I saw it coming from the sea. They will investigate it, they will find it, it will come from the ocean. More deadly than HIV and cancer. Very fast, very aggressive. How are they going to bring it out of the sea? I don't know. Is it a weed? Is there a creature in the ocean? Is it food from the sea? But it will originate from under the waters, from the ocean. And thousands, if not millions, if not billions, will die. Okay, so don't say it wasn't public, it's public. Hmm. But we need to keep on praying because they can prevent it, they can slow it down, but they can't cure. It's a problem. I'm concerned. That's why the Holy Spirit gives me all this information. I'm concerned. I want people to live. I want people to be happy. But these are things that we can pray against. Pray against. Because this is not good news. Imagine sitting there watching your screen and you're seeing millions upon millions of people dying. Thousands of people in one city dying in one day. It's a plague. It's a plague. It will be serious. It will be something that you seem like it, it flies in the air. You will not want to look at that. You will not want our learned people who break down, they will cry. They will call upon the Lord. They will even call upon the Lord. They will ask God to help them. They will even insult God. It will be painful. It will be painful. It's a plan. But why am I coming to you? So that we pray against it. Mm. So God preserves. God gives life. You have just watched part one. Here comes part two. This Sunday church service was a day never to be forgotten. The congregation was left in wonder 
at the magnitude of such a plague, one that would leave the medical fraternity helpless and could potentially rob the earth of billions unless prayer was made against it. Two months and 18 days later, Prophet Emmanuel Makandiwa returned to reiterate this dire prophecy and add more prophetic details. Again, remember the prophecy that I gave about a disease. Now each time I'm praying, I'm seeing now it's coming closer and closer and closer. A disease from the sea, which will kill more people than any disease that you have fought before. Very fast. And I saw people falling like leaves and dying. They will do everything to investigate where is it coming from. They will not find. But eventually they will confirm what I'm telling you. Something will bring that disease from the ocean to the land of the living. It's a plague that only God can stop. They will do everything. But God shall give power to his people. This is a plague that only God can stop. And God will give power to his people in the midst of global upheaval. Now that you have watched part one and part two, these parts were given after the prophecy that is coming up next. Neither of these was the first prophecy concerning the coronavirus. Continue watching to witness Prophet Emmanuel Makandiwa's astounding apprehension of the prophetic. But before we do, here is the fulfillment of the preceding prophecies. Two years, 10 months, and 24 days later. Barricaded and guarded by police with masks, Chinese authorities have traced a new deadly virus back to this seafood market in the city of Wuhan. They say a new strain of coronavirus originated here has struck dozens of people and put an entire region on edge. A newly identified coronavirus that emerged in the city of Wuhan in central China is now known to be transmissible between people. The Chinese president, Xi Jinping, says his country is waging a serious fight against the demon coronavirus outbreak. I saw it coming from the sea. The new deadly virus back to this seafood market. The virus was first identified at a market in the city of Wuhan last month, which was selling seafood. Is it food from the sea? Seafood. Seafood. A local seafood. The source of the coronavirus is. It's the wildlife and seafood market. Very fast, very aggressive. The virus is starting to spread faster. And this and new coronavirus, I guess, uh, definitely this looks like it spread fast. Very fast, very aggressive. Well, we certainly know that there are a lot of people who are infected without symptoms. There have been anecdotal cases. You will have another disease more deadly. The death toll surpasses the SARS outbreak that killed 774 people worldwide. The infection rate for this outbreak is much higher. The death toll is larger than the SARS epidemic in 2002 and 2003. Makeshift hospitals are one of the defining images of this epidemic. But this is the original in Beijing, built in seven days to fight the SARS outbreak in 2003. Now they are rebuilding it to fight a new virus. One that has killed more people in China alone than SARS did worldwide. 
Back here in the U.S., the coronavirus outbreak has led to the first federal quarantine in decades. It wasn't just a lack of news, it was a cover-up, as authorities hid the scale of the epidemic. SARS, short for Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome, killed 774 people in eight months. This time, things are different. You will have another disease more deadly. This was already ambitious, to build a thousand-bed hospital from scratch in less than a week. But authorities have decided it will not be enough. A second, bigger hospital has been commissioned. It will be something that will seem like it, it flies in the air. Making a big U-turn on its previous announcement that there was no evidence to suggest aerosol transmission was possible, Chinese health authorities admitted for the first time on Wednesday that COVID-19 can spread through the air. China's National Health Commission admitted that the novel coronavirus can be transmitted through aerosols. It appears the virus could be aerosolized. And thousands, if not millions, if not billions, will die. Look at China's own actions. They have quarantined 60 million people, 60 million, more than the entire population of our West Coast. The coronavirus could infect 60% of the global population, 60%. That's an awfully big number. It's two thirds of the world population. And this is according to Hong Kong's leading public health epidemiologist. This is Professor Gabriel Leung. The man who played a crucial role during the SARS outbreak, he has now sounded an alarm. He says the cases so far may just be the tip of the iceberg. The worst is yet to come. He says when China's massive lockdowns have not worked, what good will these mobility restrictions do in other countries? According to him, instead of containing the virus, the world will have to work to mitigate its effects. And the effects, I can tell you, are deadly. They can prevent it, they can slow it down, but they can't cure. Right now, we really don't have a cure for the coronavirus that's circulating that everybody is talking about. So unfortunately, uh, there's no specific known treatment for um, uh, coronavirus. They can't cure. We really don't have a cure for the coronavirus. Therefore, I have been personally directing and deploying the epidemic prevention and containment work this time. We can prevent it. Prevention. Our learned people will break down, they will cry. Taiwan's health minister made headlines when he broke down in tears Tuesday night over the coronavirus outbreak. And I saw people falling like leaves and dying. It's a plague. Churches in China and around the world called for three days of fasting and prayer in early February. It is our way to cry to God to repent and ask God to stop this plague. It's a plague. God to stop this plague. Here is what some world leaders had to say. We are working with the Chinese government and working closely together on the coronavirus outbreak in China. My administration will take all necessary steps to safeguard our citizens from this threat. 
The Chinese government attaches great importance because the purpose of the government is to put the lives and health of the people at the top of all priorities. If you listen carefully, you will notice that the prophet said we have diseases that are coming, meaning it is not one. We need to keep praying because more diseases and plagues are out there. Now we have diseases that are coming. The prophet was very clear concerning the location from which the disease would come from. And it is not on any land, but it's. I saw it coming from the sea. Seafood. From the sea. Seafood. From the sea. Oh, seafood. From the sea. And seafood. From the sea. And listen again. But it will originate from under the waters, from the ocean. And last night, there was a headline, Mondo. Yes, sir. About uh, a Chinese man mm -hmm. in the United States, mm -hmm. and he was doing an interview. Yes, absolutely. This is the billionaire whistleblower is what they're calling him. He was having an interview with the former White House chief strategist, Steve Bannon, and the information that this whistleblower brought to the table shocked probably every media outlet right now is going viral. The information he said this, one, he believes, I quote, 1.5 million people are confirmed with the coronavirus in China. But this is the shocking part. Over, he believes over 50,000 bodies are being cremated right now, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. This is unheard of. Usually a crematory is run, you know, for the whole week, maybe four or five hours a week. Well, this one right now in Wuhan is running 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And he's saying this, China, the media, the people are not telling us the truth of the real numbers of what he predicts and he believes of the people that are dying, not the people that are being quarantined, the deaths that were not being reported, he believes is probably in the millions already. Wow. We're not being told. Just last night to this morning, there are 15,000 new infection cases, as well as 250 new deaths that have already taken place within 24 hours. And now, here's what they're saying. If they don't get a hold of it soon, 60% of the world will come down with this disease. Is that right? Absolutely. According to Dr. Gabriel from, told The Guardian, it says this, and I quote, the coronavirus rate of infection suggests that 60% of the global population could get the virus if it is not brought under control. The stories are unbelievable. Prayer is key because Prophet Makandiwa saw the number of fatalities going into the billions. And the world is already fearing for those numbers, just as the prophet had prophesied. The coronavirus could infect 60% of the global population. 60%, that's an awfully big number. It's two-thirds of the world population. And this is according to Hong Kong's leading public health epidemiologist. If they don't get a hold of it soon, 60% of the world will come down with this disease. And thousands, if not millions, if not billions, will die. 60% of the world population is more than 4 billion people. If we don't pray, according to the instruction the Prophet gave, we will indeed reach these billions. One may think this is where it all began, but let us go back almost five years ago from the first confirmed case of the coronavirus to the 11th of January, 2015. This was where it all began. On this day, Prophet Emmanuel Makandiwa gave a prophecy about the China explosion. This prophecy is already available online. This is the shorter version of the original prophecy. Let us listen closely to what the prophet said about the explosion 
and ultimately the coronavirus. We need really to pray. China, China there. China. It's, don't compare it to anything. Of all the viral infections that we have seen, the prophet begins this prophecy by warning us that what the world was going to encounter was unlike anything it had ever seen before. If that is to happen, my question is, who is safe now? The prophet of God continues and highlights the extreme virulence of this virus. It would be infectious not only in China, but it was going to spread all around the globe. And the question would be, who would be safe from its grasp? These things are going to continue happening over and over, over and over, over and over again. These global infections that would be incomparable would happen over and over again. This coronavirus would not be the last of its kind. But we need to pray. Because this time, there is a place somewhere where these guys are working on like a nuclear. The prophet clearly prophetically points out that this time, by using the phrase this time, he was bringing out the profound prophetic insight that there are going to be many other times that these attacks will happen over and over again. But at this specific juncture, what would begin was the explosion. He then prophetically uncovers a conspiracy of the involvement of research laboratories when he said, like a nuclear. This additionally parabolically indicates the extensive destructive nature of the coronavirus. The way it is going to work, we need to pray. It's not all going to be about an explosion, contamination of the atmosphere. Now the prophet of God was about to reveal the inner workings of this deadly virus. He begins by declaring that indeed, the explosion will take place. But this prophecy was not only about the explosion, but the contamination of the atmosphere. In the China explosion, the first contamination of the atmosphere indeed occurred. But this contamination did not cause deadly harm. So then, which deadly contamination had the prophet seen spiritually? Which of the two contaminations was of the grim magnitude prophetically seen by the prophet? It was a demonic atmospheric contamination, which would result in the contamination of the atmosphere by the coronavirus. It is really catastrophic. It's chaotic. The virus has turned medical systems upside down. International travel bans have been issued to many countries affected by this plague. Numerous international fixtures have been postponed. The global markets have been destabilized and the loss of value is well into the trillions. Innumerable deaths have occurred in several countries and entire cities have been shut down and placed on quarantine. The World Health Organization has issued an urgent warning and declared the coronavirus a pandemic. The prophet placed emphasis with the terrifying level of vehemence. This truly is a catastrophic and chaotic unfolding of events on a global scale. It will take you time and days to gather the bodies together. On a daily basis, several hundreds of new infections are being reported worldwide and people are dying 
in unquantifiable numbers in every continent on earth. In China alone, the number of deaths have been said to be well over half a million people and still counting. The deaths that were not being reported, he believes is probably in the millions already. Whatever you see happening far away, it's not going to end there. Now, some individuals may think that this prophecy was all about the explosion. But listen to this prophetic utterance once more. Whatever you see happening far away, it's not going to end there. It's a demonic spirit that has gone on rampage. The demon coronavirus outbreak. At this point, now you can clearly see that the man of God has crossed geographical lines. It is no longer the explosion incident in China. An explosion in China cannot affect the Zimbabweans gathered in the church venue where this prophecy was delivered. If that is the case, what then was the prophet referring to? This statement is the key that shows that the prophet was not just prophesying about the explosion. He was encouraging the locals to pray against this viral plague that would migrate through the atmosphere and affect even those in Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe is geographically located far away from China. But the prophet was warning the congregation that what they saw happening there would not end there. The movement of this virus from China to the rest of the world would be the work of a violent, destructive, demonic spirit. This demonic spirit on rampage would be the cause of the contamination of the atmosphere. And in the November 2016 prophecy, the prophet further clarified that indeed, this plague would seem to fly in the air. The coronavirus would be transmitted via the atmosphere. It would be something that you seem like it, it flies in the air. COVID-19 can spread through the air. Coronavirus can be transmitted through aerosols. The virus could be aerosolized. It will stop at nothing. Save at prayer. Only prayer can save us now. If you listen closely, you will hear these words echoing through. When he prophesied concerning this virus in November 2016 and February 2017, man's efforts would be futile. This virus will only stop at prayer. Only prayer can save us. By using the word us, the prophet was placing further emphasis that this incident was not only about the China explosion, but it was about the coronavirus, which will move upon the earth, becoming a major global health concern. Let us consider closely these two prophecies given in this single prophetic utterance. During the China explosion, there were few casualties and the contamination of the atmosphere was minimal and non-lethal. This was the first of the attacks that Prophet Emmanuel Makandiwa prophesied would happen over and over again. The attack to follow in the sequence of happenings would start in China, then move with great proportion to the rest of the world. This would be the contamination of the atmosphere by the coronavirus and the eventual gathering of the bodies together because of the many deaths caused by this global plague. This sequence does not end there. Many more of these destructive global attacks will continue to happen. Within the China explosion prophecy, Prophet Emmanuel Makandiwa indicated his prophetic intentions by using the phrase, the way it is going to work. The it there was the sequence of attacks beginning in China. 
he then went further to reveal the incident that would prophetically begin this sequence of attacks, the Tianjin port explosion, which happened then in 2015. The second attack to follow in this sequence is the coronavirus, which is prevalent now. Investigations are still ongoing. To date, they are failing to diagnose this virus. Some are saying it was made from a laboratory in China. Others are saying it is from the sea. Notice that both areas are covered by the Prophet when he said something like a nuclear. Could this be biological warfare or could it be something from the sea? The coronavirus has striked the fear of God into a large majority of people worldwide. With questions like how deadly is it, will we ever find a cure, how do I make sure I stay safe and so on, this virus has the world on edge. And of course there are questions as to how the virus started in the first place. Some sources claim it started with a bat soup of sorts. Others claim it started in a market where live animals were sold as delicacies. And the most wild claim includes that the virus was created in a lab. It's a plague that only God can stop. They will do everything, but God shall give power to his people. 